sorry. Sorrow won't save your town, Blacksmith. Couldn't have done this. One You'll find his tomb in a cemetery in the Weeping Hollow. And if you see my fool yeah. apprentice out there, tell him to get back to town. <laughs> There's a big pack coming this time. Stand your ground. That's the last of them. The bridge is clear. death animation you're seeing right now is uh, holy damage. What happens when a monster dies when uh, the final blow is done by holy. And uh, we now have level 10, the passive level. So there's not going to be too much to talk about. We get thrill of the hunt. And tactical advantage. Tactical advantage is whenever you use vault, smoke screen, or backflip with evas evasive fire, you gain 60% movement speed for 2 seconds. I actually like this ability as a movement ability. Um, very useful, like in the fight with the Skeleton King. If I would have had this uh, prior to fighting him, this would have been very helpful because then I could vault and then run away very quickly. Uh, Thrill of the Hunt is another ability that's actually very nice at this level. For every 10 seconds, your next bow attack will mobilize your target for 3 seconds. So they don't get stunned. They can still attack, but uh, you immobilize so you keep them in place. So not very useful against, say, casting mobs, but if you've got a bunch of melee mobs coming after you, that's very nice, such as, you know, the Skeleton King or his mobs. Uh, so I like both. I think I'm going to go ahead and take tactical advantage, just because I honestly, I think my playstyle is one where I just prefer movement. So in this case, I could put that down, run away real fast, and get teleported on. Sweet revenge. So, and this uh, crossbow I got from crafting, quite nice actually. All right, there you have it. I'll just go ahead and do it again. Move real fast. And I'll go ahead and do Thrill of the Hunt so you can see that as well. Okay, Thrill the Hunt should be back up. I haven't seen the buff hit my bars yet. 10 seconds, next bow attack, and we'll your target for 3 seconds. Before, I don't know if they removed it, but it would be... You would see a little buff down here that showed Thrill of the Hunt when it was available to use. I don't think it needs a bow, does it? We'll just put a regular bow on. It's not proccing there either. Now, uh, see, yeah, that's immobilized him, but I don't get the uh, buff on my bars anymore. That's a change. I wonder if that's intentional or a bug, because it's actually kind of nice to have it pop up in my bar here when it's ready for use.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, since I didn't welcome you back in the last segment, welcome back to Kage Kaze's Domain. This is Patch 15, and this is the Demon Hunter, and I'm getting ever closer to level 11. Uh, I hadn't thought about it before in depth, but uh, after playing around with it, I finally have an understanding as to how Entangling Shot really works here. It's a lot like Chain Lightning. In other words, it's only going to be able to go in one direction. So if I've got these group here kind of in this line, I don't want to hit the center. I want to hit the extreme edge. And then from there, it will jump in succession to every target in that line. I hadn't really watched it before. I figured if I hit the center, then the chain would spread out, you know, left and right. But apparently it just goes in one direction. So keep that in mind. Entangling shot works just like chain lightning. So get them in a line if you can, and then just kind of hit the outside edge. And you should be able to hit them all. Quite useful with this rune. Of course, when it only hits two people, you don't have to worry about it because it's just going to hit that one other person nearby. Keep your distance from it. This burden is mine. You dare to You know, I got Bola Shot. And I got Withering Fire for Rapid Fire, so that's new. Okay, so uh, things that we've lost in the beta uh, since I just got Bolo Shot. Uh, obviously, I lost Vaults of Explosions, which uh, increases the radius of Bolo Shot. Uh, so that's kind of a shame, but I'm going to go ahead and try it here. All right, shoot out an explosive bola that wraps itself around the target. After one second, the bola explodes, dealing 130% weapon damage as fire to the target and 110% weapon damage as fire to everything else in seven yards. A decent ability, honestly. Uh, very nice AoE damage. As you can see, this is always a guaranteed, and it happens instantly, plus it has a snare. So that's 75 weapon damage up to four enemies with the rune that I currently have. And this is 130 to a primary, so Bola Shot actually does more single target damage than Hungering Arrow, and then it does 110 to everything else, which uh, has a potential to do more damage than Entangling Shot. Because uh, if they're all ta packed up together, then all the explosions will do more damage. Uh, but keep in mind, of course, that there is that one second delay. So you kind of have to play with it a little strategically. Uh, get it on the targets that are going to maximize the damage output. Now, you can keep firing bolas on one target, and it will continue to wrap new bolas on that target. Need more time. So uh, it will not, like other abilities, refresh the stack. In this case, it's just going to keep putting a new one on. So every one second will be an So if, if you're just spamming that ability on the enemy, every one second will be an explosion. Uh, and uh, I had heard... Okay. This is a nice change. Um, when destroying objects, you'll notice the bola explodes instantly. And you can actually use that strategically. Like, if I take this guy over here, let's get him by these, and boom. I like this change because one problem I had with Bola Shot, and one of the reasons why I didn't like using it as a primary ability, was if you wrapped it across, or if you tried to destroy objects with it, then it would wrap around the object, take one second to explode, and then blow up and finally blow up the object. If you're sitting there and you want to blow up a whole bunch of objects fast, and you're trying to just destroy as much as possible to get the loot out of the destroyable objects, then Bola Shot is honestly one of those annoyances, having to wait a second after every shot. Uh, so thankfully that's gone. Uh, new rune now uh, that we've never gotten to play with before. This is Withering Fire. It reduces the initial hatred cost to 5 and ignites your arrows, causing them to deal fire damage. Um, that is interesting. I could have sworn before it also increased the damage, but I have no proof of that in any of my notes. But, uh, of course, I never got to play with it, so it's not something I would have remembered. 
Um, this is nice. This, 5 as the initial cost and then 10 per second. That means uh, I can just start it up real quick and easy. And oh, that, that, that's actually really nice. 5 hatred just to start it and then 10 every second. We've already talked about how uh, the 10 hatred every t uh, second while channeling this ability is uh, really efficient because it's 10 hatred for 228% weapon damage. Now you don't have to worry about, instead of a 30 cost, like if you think about it, without the rune, it costs you 30 just to do the first 228, and then it was 10 after. Now it's 15 or, or to for the initial, and then 10 after. So this makes uh, rapid fire so much more efficient. So look at that, I can fire it so much longer because I don't have that initial investment. And the ability now changes the type to fire. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind because we don't know about immunities later on in the game. In Diablo 2, monsters could be immune to elemental damage of some type. Now, uh, knowing Blizzard's philosophy, they got rid of elemental immunities in World of Warcraft, uh, but that's an MMO. So there is a different philosophy there, but I have a feeling they may have gotten rid of immunities, but what they probably have done is make it so that there are resistances. There you go, I'm going to try and do that. That's something to keep in mind. I do believe that uh, if a monster dies with a bola on it, that the uh, any other bolas or if a monster dies with a bola on it then that bola will not go off that seems to be the case uh, from what I'm seeing here so if you uh, are using this you want to be careful make sure uh, if you're trying to spread out your the AOE of bola shot uh, try and separate it by a space or two some good damage to it, doing uh, 23 damage on a crit. Uh, I like Rapid Fire's new uh, efficiency. So these are really good spells, to, to be honest, perfectly honest with you. Excellent single target. Um, a very well-rounded spell, honestly. High-end single target, high-end AoE, um, but it does have enough drawbacks to keep it from fully replacing a Tangling Shot and Hungering Arrow. A hungering Arrow can still pierce and do quite a bit of damage as it flies. Uh, and Tangling Shot still has a snare and has reliable damage that happens the moment of impact. With Bola Shot, you've got the second delay. If a monster dies with it, it won't go off. There are plenty of drawbacks to using Bola Shot to make it balanced with uh, everything else. So I like that. It's kind of a shame we still don't get grenades. and gr I still really like that ability. Uh, one thing I'm going to look at here real fast is Hungering Arrow. See, it looks like we're not going to get Cinder Arrow this time. I liked playing around that with that last time. So Demon Hunter is another class that you're not going to get two runes on one ability. Uh, so far, only Monk and Demon Hunter have done it, uh, as far as I'm aware of, where other classes still give you one or two abilities to choose from on your first primary. Uh, so Cinder Arrow was kind of a nice trade-off between getting the pierce and doing extra damage. Uh, but I like getting Rapid Fire's uh, Withering Fire a little better as a trade-off. So I'll go kill the... Uh, Skeletons in front of Leoric here. Just kind of get an additional feel for the damage they can do. And I'll save killing him on video for uh, you will never for the final levels. Just 12 and 13 to go. So kind of spread it out here.
Now this will continually do damage as fire. I talked about it earlier. Uh, this weapon does holy damage, but elemental damages only affect abilities that don't have an inherent damage type or do physical. So, for example, hungering. Um, notice how it doesn't say physical or anything. It just says that deals damage. Entangling, uh, same thing. So these would be prime candidates for doing holy damage. Uh, Bola shot specifically says it does damage as fire. So the two abilities I just got are fire-oriented sk oriented skills. Um, so Bola Shot will always be fire, it won't do the holy, and Withering Fire will always do fire damage. Uh, again, that just says uh, weapon damage. This says weapon damage as physical. Now, uh, I do believe that also removes the elemental properties of your weapon, if it says as physical, because monsters I've killed with rapid fire, and I'm not talking about um, Withering Fire here, just base rapid fire, um, I don't believe they've gone away in the Puff of Holy Magic. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, keep that in mind uh, as, as I play. I'll try and keep an eye on it. Um, but in case uh, you didn't catch what I had said earlier about this, elemental damages like that plus 1 to 3 Holy basically get converted to just a base flat plus 1 to 3 damage. So the holy damage still counts, but it's just not holy damage anymore. It gets converted to the damage type of the ability. So it'll get converted to physical or fire. Alright, two more levels to go. I'll see you on the next one. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I got level 12. And unfortunately, level 12 is a level that I'm not overly fond of uh, with what I got here. So let me go to the cemetery to uh, try and farm some... Uh, farm some events like Jar of Souls or something like that to get some additional experience. The uh, leveling so far has been kind of slow, and I think a lot of that's just because I haven't had experience gear. It's just felt like it's taking a long time to get to 13. Uh, but I definitely still want to do that before I move on. <clears throat> Alright, so uh, before I move on to the skills, I want to kind of show off that I found this uh, spiteful light hand crossbow. Uh, I This is the first hand crossbow I have found the entire time that I've been playing since patch 15. I, uh, at least while on, the, on this character, I, I don't know if I found others and I might have trashed them. Um, I almost wish I hadn't. Uh, so apparently, and this goes hand-to-hand -hand again, I've mentioned this before, class-specific items, certain class-specific items are not dropping right away. Uh, they are dropping either around the Skeleton King or after. So Mighty Belts, Hand Crossbows, foc uh, focuses to an extent for mages uh, or for wizards. Um, quivers, not so much Quivers have been dropping, but uh, not nearly as common as they used to. Uh, and they tend to drop more mid-game for the beta. And uh, not only did I get this hand crossbow, but it also has a nice amount of damage. This is obviously a high item level, simply because it does 11.2. It does only a little bit less DPS of this two-handed weapon that I have. The stat change tells me I lose 1.1 damage. That's honestly incredible that this one-handed item could be just that powerful. I, and the sad part is, is that I don't have a second one to mess around with, and the earliest level uh, hand crossbow you can craft for the blacksmith is not usable in the beta. They, you know, Demon Hunters went from having uh, like three different choices for hand crossbows and getting a rare, like one of the only rare weapons that you can equip in the beta, and now <laughs> nothing. Uh, you know, honestly, it, it's probably a good change, because having that powerful of a weapon early on, it was, uh, pretty crazy. So this, uh, obviously, very specific damage to me, because, honestly, there are classes that can use, uh, bows. Uh, my witch doctor could equip bows. Not hand crossbows, but, like, regular crossbows and bows. Uh, very interesting that they can, so... Even though the Demon Hunter is really the only class that uses them with their ranged special abilities, any class can. So you won't, uh, you might not see Demon Hunter specific stuff on these two-handers. You'll probably see it more on the one-handers. 
so this is really nice. You'll notice that it does the same maximum damage, but it has a lower uh, minimum damage, uh, 2 compared to 9. So once again, we have a high... Um, the swing is very high between the low damage and the high damage. However, the attacks per second is 1.6 compared to 1.3, and that's including the increased attack speed on the two-hander. So what we're going to do is take a look. The DPS will go down, but... Uh, I don't want to show this off 17.4 to 16.4 so I lose one DPS but what you can see here is I fire a lot faster one DPS doesn't bother me much especially because the maximum damage is the same it's just that I'm gonna have a chance of doing lower damage uh, for certain abilities but look at how fast that fires that gives me a lot more of my resource back. So. So that, I went to about five seconds or so, went down to about here, and then let's just kind of see how much faster this fires. Wait for that to fill. You can see it went down a bit further, but you also notice how much faster it fired, and that's just with one. If I had a second one, I would get a 15% uh, attack speed increase, because you do get 15% additional attack speed for dual wielding. Uh, so what I want to see here is kind of what kind of DPS I get here. That's 16.4. Look at that. Oh my goodness. The attack speed increase on this 10%, 16 to 18 one and a half. That's crazy. So this compares that goes from 17 to 19. So it's about the same. But since I'm using a one-hander, I decided to go ahead and try and craft a shield, see if I got lucky. Well, I did. Plus 10 dexterity. That's 10% additional damage. Uh, that plus it's got gold, and it's got an additional chance to block, which is actually pretty good. Good armor on it. I want to see if this 10 dexterity can beat out this 10% attack speed. So I'm at 18. 17. Uh, doesn't quite beat it out, but you'll notice that the DPS, is, the difference is about half a DPS. And I don't really need the attack speed, although uh, losing the regeneration does kind of suck. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold on to those just in case. Doesn't look too bad with the uh, shield either. All right, so new skills and abilities for level 12. Uh, this one I don't really care for. This is Chakram. Cost of 10 hatred. Fires a swirling Chakram that does 150% weapon damage as physical to enemies along its path. I'm actually glad this has been pushed back to a higher level because it's just something that, honestly, is a lower level ability. I didn't care for and I'll kind of show you why. Um, it does 150% damage, so it's less than Impale, it's less than Rapid Fire. These cost 25 and 20, respectively. This only costs 10. So it's half as much, um, and it's more than half the damage, though. So, theoretically, Shock Room is more efficient than Impale or Rapid Fire, just because it halves the cost, or in this case, uh, more than halves the cost but it's uh, doing more than half of the damage, so efficiency way up there. I'll show you what I don't care about it though. Uh, Caltrips did get a rune, we got Hook Spines, and this is just kind of a straight up buff to it, to uh, the slow effect. Instead of 60% slow, this gives an 80% slow for 6 seconds. That is a massive slowdown. You're making the monster move at only 20% of their intended speed. That's what I like about this. Get that. Fast firing. Alright, so let me show Chakram. And you'll see that it's very quick. And I just want to take a look at my regeneration to kind of see where that lies. You get two or 4.5 hatred uh, regeneration. And I do apparently have some extra on me. But that's 0.5. So, 4.5 compared to 10 casting this. So, assuming I only use one Chakram a second, it would basically be half cost. There's Chakram. It fires around. It's got a circular arc. But that is kind of the reason why I don't like it. It's 
not... It's almost to me in the same lines as Plague of Toads and uh, Shock Pulse. I can actually miss an enemy that's right on t uh, right next to me if I aim wrong. But obviously it's very cheap and so therefore I can kind of spam it. So it has that. That is quite nice. Uh, there are some runes that I think would make Chakra much more uh, enjoyable to me. And uh, I'll kind of show you here what I mean. Like Twin Chakrams, that fires two of them and they fire in opposite arcs. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, each chakra only does 100 damage instead of 150, but the arcs would make it so much easier to hit things with that I could probably deal with that. And it's a wide range, and it's pretty, uh, you know, pretty cheap still. Uh, this one has a slower curve and does more damage. Let's see. Yeah, see, there's a bunch of these, like even Boomerang... Shuriken Cloud. There's some of these that I would really love to try out. It's kind of like Plague of Toads and Shock Pulse. There's some runes that they have that uh, I would love to play with just to see how they change the gameplay for those abilities. Uh, but unfortunately... I just to put that down so you can see it. Not too much different. Uh, unfortunately, just as it is as a base ability, I don't care for Shock Room. And that's more of a personal choice, you know. Uh, if you like it and you've got your reasons why, you know, honestly, that's great. Uh, I think uh, it's good to have abilities that will cater to different playstyles. Not every ability has to meet my um, approval. You know, it's it's however you want to play. Like, see, he just went right past all of those that I threw out to him. Yeah, not. Here, let me slow him down by 80%. Look at that. That's actually a pretty neat effect there. Look how slowly he moves. So I'm seeing the downside of having a weapon that has a low minimum damage. Uh, you'll notice I put out some of these uh, bullish... Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Bullish shots. And uh, the damage is really weak. Like it'll it, it'll explode, and uh, I can either one shot a skeleton or I could take up to three shots, just because the minimum damage is down there. This is part of the reason why I chose the shield with the uh, dexterity, because I feel that the additional damage of dexterity can make up for the lower minimum damage rather than firing faster. Granted, the DPS disagrees with me, but I still kind of like the idea. Plus, having a shield for, the for basically a loss of merely 0.5 DPS, I've got more defense now. And I can block uh, ranged abilities and melee shots, so... This is a very good uh, offensive and de defensive gear setup. <sighs> Alright, uh, well that's Chakram. I do like the hook spines of Caltrops. Don't care for Chakram. I think I'll go back to Withering Fire. Um... And to be honest with you, if you kind of look at the rune there of Withering Fire compared to Chakram, Withering Fire has a cost of 5, and then 10 Hatred while channeling. That's honestly as efficient, if not more efficient, than Chakram, because that's, for the first attack, 15 Hatred for 228 compared to 10 Hatred for 150. So Withering Fire, the rune, is honestly better than Chakram. Um, even though Shockroom can go through multiple enemies, Withering Fire will stop at the first enemy it hits. It won't go, it won't pierce a group. Shockroom will pierce a group, but I feel that the Withering Fire's ability to hit hard and fast with minimal uh, hatred cost uh, offsets that enough to be a better ability at this point, at least at this point in the game. Other Shockroom runes might be better. Uh, I really miss Elemental Arrow 
it, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it's like Chakram. It pierces enemies, uh, but it goes in a straight line. And I was able to kind of move in the right position and just tear through groups of enemies because I just went straight in a line. It does much like rapid fire, only rapid fire which stops at an enemy that continued forward, which is of course why the damage is 150 compared to 228. Uh, damage of Elemental Arrow comparable to Chakram, which I find that interesting. I, I honestly think Chakram, I'll be honest here, I kind of think Chakram should be buffed in damage simply because it has an erratic flight path. And I think that Elemental Arrow having not only the same... It, Elemental Arrow has the same hatred cost and has 5 more weapon damage on it, 5% more weapon damage on its shot, an elemental arrow you can just fire in a straight line, it'll go through all the enemies that you want it to, whereas Chakram will kind of move around in a circle. I think that if they want Chakram to be fully viable, I think it should go up in damage, just because the chance that a monster can move around, like you saw a skeleton that I was fighting, uh, pretty much just walk through the Chakram and not get hit. You know, I, I think for an ability like that, the damage should be just a touch bit higher. Um, kind of look at... Uh, I was going to say Plague of Toads, but I think that's a, that's like a 150, whereas... Uh, so Chakram's like in the same line, but... Again, you can't really compare similar spells, so... I mean, compare it to similar spells in its category, not to a spell that another character has. Because the thing about toads is that it's all three toads do that damage, where this is just one chakram that does the damage. It has a, pot a potential. This has a potential to hit one target more than once. But to be honest with you, it's more than likely only going to hit that target twice at most. So, unless it's really a really big target. I don't know. I think the damage maybe should be real re-evaluated. Re uh, one day I'll learn to talk. All right, so this has been uh, level 12. Unfortunately, not my favorite level. We'll get to 13, and we'll see how things feel from there. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I haven't quite gotten a level, of course, uh, but I just got lucky and found a white hand crossbow uh, out here in the cathedral, so uh, nice luck chance on that. Uh, they may have been dropping before, but I've been kind of ignoring whites, uh, favoring magical items. Uh, honestly, even now, it looks like I can't do that. <laughs> so, Cathedral level 4, some white items are still useful. Uh, this one's a 12.8 compared to the 11.2 I had found before. And I kind of want to quick go over, because we were talking about dual wielding before, kind of show you what happens uh, when you change these up. Uh, I have this, uh, as you can see, 12.8, got 20.7 DPS. If I switch to a quiver, 20.6. 20. 20.64 compared to 20.07. Alright, uh, and what you can see here is you'll notice my attacks per second is at 1.6. With this, it's at 1.76. So it goes up a tiny bit. Uh, and as you can see here, my damage is 20.7 compared to 17.56. Big difference when you consider that this is 11 and this is 12. The difference here should only be the difference here is really only about one, maybe a little more than one DPS, but you know it's like 2.3 more DPS. And part of it is you look at this. This has more maximum damage, one more maximum, and one more minimum for the same attack speed, uh, so which is really nice. Not only that, but uh, the dexterity here is helping to boost that. Considering that this is a percentage, 10 percentage, every little bit of extra damage that this does is more of a boost to uh, my damage here. Um, and even that, then, this attack speed, so we go from 20.6 to 18. You know, again, more damage, but doing it in a faster, um, you know, doing it more often. Now, uh, I had talked about getting a 15% uh, speed attack crease for dual wielding, and this is going to kind of prove it here. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to take this off so we can see the base, because it's 1.76 now. Let's take this off. This is the base attack speed, 1.6. Take that off, and you'll see that hasn't changed. This is 1.6. This is 1.6. I'm at currently 18.76 DPS. I put this on, 20.22. My attacks per second has gone up to 1.2. 8.4. Almost two attacks per second. Now the difference between 1.6 and 1.8 is not large. 
uh, at least to, you know, human comprehension. Here's the attack speed with one. And here's it with two. Doesn't feel like a lot. It's very subtle. And as we get up in levels, if uh, some of these have slower attack speeds, then you'll see it more often. There is a, a definite increase. We just may not see it as much. You'll probably see it more in abilities like this, which fire very fast. This is alternating. As you can see there, it's alternating between weapons as it goes. And so I want to compare that uh, 1.84 compared to this, which was 1.76. So not only that, but I'm getting the ad additional benefit of getting this 0.5 hatred per second. Uh, now the reason why it's, uh, the DPS is not going up a, a ton, you know, 20.07 compared to 20.22, here that's actually the quiver does more damage if you compare it. 20.22 to 20.64. So the 10% attack speed on this is better than the 15% attack speed of these. So that's what you want to think. So this is why I think they went to the damage, the damage speed or the weapon speed increase on quivers. 10% is just lower, as you can see, 10 to 15. 5% lower than dual wielding's attack speed benefit. So therefore, using a two-hander, they're giving you, they're kind of baking in that uh, additional attack speed bonus by giving you a quiver and making sure that it's not quite enough to match dual wielding. And in this case, what it is, is it's because the damage on this is that much higher compared to the damage on this. Um, the difference between these two weapons, 12.8 to 11.2, the difference is fairly close to a 15% DPS change, which is why the numbers are going down. If these were the same attack speed, or the same damage and attack speed, dual wielding would be better than one weapon and quiver. So 20.6, 20.7. So in this case, I will probably go ahead and use the single with quiver. Uh, but keep in mind, too, the other thing to think about is um, I get more hatred regeneration on this one than this one. I, I might do that. Just go ahead and dual wield because I get more hatred generation on this than I have on the quiver. Uh, it's just a shame that's not magical. And there you go. Those are the things you have to consider. The weapon's attack speed, the weapon's damage, what's the difference between your two weapons, and is that going to benefit you more than a quiver uh, or some other kind of offhand based on what class you are. Um, and procs, obviously. Procs on the weapons themselves. And then later gems. We haven't even gotten into gems yet. So those are the things you want to think about when considering dual wielding and compared to two-handed or just using a one-handed weapon with an offhand. Final level, preparation, vengeance. All right then. First, I'm going to start off by saying, you know, I am thoroughly exhausted at this point because uh, leveling has felt like it's taken forever. 
I think what I need to do is get some experience gear and use it after I kill the Skeleton King. Still use, you know, everything I find normally beforehand. Um, because honestly, I've only... The difference between playthroughs with experience gear and without has only been about one or two levels. Not a big deal. So, and then afterwards, I think I need the experience gear. Because I've farmed Leoric, Leoric bike about five times here. So, I'll look forward to doing that to try and get this content out faster. Because honestly, that has been a major stumbling block today. I probably could have done uh, a few more uh, vid recordings or gotten something uploaded had this not have taken so long. But <clears throat> Alright, um, we move on. Uh, let's go over the passive real quick. It is Vengeance. Maximum hatred is increased by 25. In addition, you gain 20 hatred and 2 discipline whenever you're healed by a health club. This is actually a pretty nice perk. 25 additional maximum hatred. Uh, I could see that being useful, especially gaining hatred with globes. So I'm going to go ahead and try and use that. And uh, what, our new hunting ability that replaces vault is preparation, which instantly restores all of your discipline every 45 seconds. Uh, this is quite nice. This is something that we didn't get to in the beta before. Uh, I believe this came in last patch on 14. Uh, because preparation used to be, before we had all of these... Preparation was the only ability that was in the utility category. When we had three, we had spenders, generators, and utility. Utility only had preparation, and uh, it was given at level 30. And it has been given at level 30 for a while, so now we finally get it here at 13. Um, let's consider what we can use it on. I'm going to go up here to secondary, and uh, nothing up here is discipline. I've got caltrips and smokescreen right now. Eventually Shadow Power, and Vault. So three abilities at this level. So I'm not entirely sure that uh, I can see preparations being useful at this level. Um, I still have my Caltrips. That's really nice. The 80% slow. 8 Discipline. I can keep putting them down. It feels more in line with using something like Smokescreen, which takes a lot of Discipline, so then you could use Smokescreen... Uh, proper preparation and then pop smoke screen again. I think honestly because I like vault so much I would rather just use it with vault. Of course obviously you can't do that in directed mode I would have to take my uh, elective mode here and just change it around. I can do that. Just wait for it to come back. Need more time. There's preparation. And in 45 seconds, it'll be back up again. So that's not too bad. At this level, I don't know, it might be a little early for it, but you know, I can see why they would give it to you because there have been a few spots when fighting the Skeleton King and things like that where I would uh, end up spending my discipline uh, by having to dodge multiple things in a row and I could have really used the preparation for that kind of issue. So, not bad. And now I can use it for fast travel somewhat. Probably would have been better to keep uh, tactical advantage to use it for fast travel. Of course, I've lost my caltrips now. Alright, so. Uh, I guess let me go ahead and go over my final thoughts. I still like the Demon Hunter. Uh, these last few levels haven't been all that interesting as far as skills. Uh, the hook spines of Caltrips I think were good because that's 80% uh, slow. I liked getting Bola shot. I like uh, 
I honestly like Bola Shot a lot more now. It hasn't really changed other than the fact that it blows up instantly when trying to hit inanimate objects and hit breakable objects. And to be honest with you, I think that was the only thing I didn't like about it because I would be going through a level and wanting to break objects and it was either use my uh, hatred spinner spenders or wait a second to break open that barrel. And since I like farming for, by breaking objects and things like that, that just uh, it didn't feel quite right to me and ended up not liking it. But now it's pretty good. Uh, I still really like Hungering Arrow though. You know, the uh, the uh, chance to proc, 50% chance to proc, I mean, I think that's pretty cool. It's not, a, you know, a major game changer. It's not uh, totally unique. It's just an additional uh, pierce chance. But uh, it felt right to me, and I kind of like that, as simple as that spell might be. Um, even Entangling Shot now, I haven't really used, you know, I, I've liked Entangling Shot to a point, but I've always liked Hungering better. But Entangling Shot with the Rune Chain Gain has um, proven to be very interesting. It's just like like I said, having a Chain Lightning that goes across and hits multiple enemies for me. I uh, really like it. Uh, I think the uh, Demon Hunter still has a, quite a bit of potential. I'm looking forward to the final abilities, playing around with, say, Companions, uh, maybe some of the Traps or Sentry. Uh, cluster Arrow looks like it could be kind of fun to try. Uh, so there's quite a bit here that uh, I think will be really nice to get into once the game comes out. So Demon Hunters are feeling really strong. I, you know, they are far from weak where they were uh, a couple patches ago, and it's really great to see. Uh, again, every class that I've played has exhibited uh, things that that class can do that are you know positive and negative that make that class solid and strong and makes it no stronger or weaker than other the other classes every single class has its very specific strengths and weaknesses and it's really just going to be about finding the gameplay that works for you i think uh or just the aesthetic you know if you like being big the big bad barbarian go for it you know it doesn't have to be any reason other than that because all the classes will work really well Alright, so that's the Demon Hunter. Next, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be looking at the Wizard. Be looking at the Wizard, because uh, the skills themselves haven't changed a lot. Damages have been adjusted here and there, and I'll be going over that once I do it. Uh, but there have been a few uh, tweaks to the order that the Wizard gets skills as well, including a rune for Ray of Frost, which I'm going to be looking forward to playing with. Um, Alright, so with everything being said, uh, this is Kage Kaze. This has been the Demon Hunter for Patch 15, and I invite you to leave any comments, questions, or suggestions in the fields below, and uh, I will definitely be reading them. Thanks very much, guys. I'll see you next time.